opening now into a regular meeting and it's 6.32. Okay, I'd like to entertain um, a motion to approve the following warrants. We have a payroll warrant for 11.21.18 for $168,374.22. An expense warrant for 11.20. 18 for $100,285.87. Approve a wire warrant for eleven twenty-eight eighteen for $17.88. Approve an expense warrant for eleven twenty-eight eighteen dollars for $51.90. Approve an expense warrant for eleven twenty-eight eighteen dollars for $95,693.50. An expense warrant for twelve four eighteen for six dollars six hundred and thirty nine dollars and thirty three cents. You have that motion. A second. Uh, any any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Then we want to approve uh, selectmen's minutes from ten twenty three eighteen. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we want to approve. Uh, Reports and minutes from other departments, uh, fire, fire reports from August, September, October, and November, and cultural council minutes from 11 5 18. Do you have that motion? Second. Second. Yes, I had, I had them right out here. Then we have some anniversaries from uh, the fire department. We have Captain Richard Phillips. Uh, he has been with us for 18 years. And Lieutenant Jeffrey White, he's been with us for 14 years, and I'd like to congratulate the two of them and uh, continue awesome. service for many more years. Yes. Thank you. you. One quick question about uh, reports and minutes. Um, one thing I'd, I'd like to see is uh, more regular written reporting from both the treasurer and the accountant's office. Okay. Um, so Karen, if you could make a note to reach out to them and if they have any questions about format and I'd like to see it monthly okay. until we get comfortable as to exactly where we're at, and then we can discuss uh, extending that to quarterly. <coughs> and then we have announcements. We have a public vision session of the Senior Center will take place at 10 a.m. Wednesday, December 12th in the banquet room in the town hall, determining residents, programming, Priorities will be crucial in planning and designing a space to suit the needs of the Brookfield seniors and the town as, as a whole. All residents are encouraged to join the conversation. Coffee and refreshments will be served. And then a reminder that the winter parking ban is in effect from November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 11 o'clock p.m. to 6 a.m. No parking on the streets, whether or not Snow is predicted, and anyone in violation will receive a citation of $25 for the first offense. So, anybody else have any announcements or anything this evening? All right. Now we're going to go into classification hearing, and we will have uh, Al June, who is our principal assessor. How you doing? Well. So, after we did this last year, and... I think it had always been done kind of informally, and I thought maybe we should have something written up. So I had started working on it, and then Karen came over to the other day and said, hey, can you write up something? So I said, beautiful. So this is kind of, you know, I went out and saw what other towns do, and what I wanted to do is just have this first page that says, even though I can, uh, there's three basic areas we need to talk about. The first one is the most important. And that is where if we had a lot of commercial and industrial, and we wanted to shift the burden, the larger cities do this, Worcester, uh, Pittsfield, you know, the places that have bigger, um, bigger commercial that they can rely on. If we were to uh, put the maximum amount on the commercial, it probably would make a penny difference in our tax rate. And we would proceed to, um, there'd be a lot of animosity for many of the uh, businesses. So. My recommendation, it's your, it's your discussion and vote, but my recommendation would be stay with a, a tax factor, with a, uh, a factor of one, which means that all commercial, industrial, personal property, residential are at the same tax rate. Can you move that motion? I'll second the motion. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
And then the next one is one people come in and ask about, um, and it's the residential exemption. The cities like Watertown, Cambridge, Boston, mm -hmm. they do it and they say, okay, if you want or a homeowner in the town, in that city, maybe the first 100,000 you don't pay uh, taxes on, they get away with it by charging additional for the um, apartments. Then you get into like Provincetown, Barnstable, Nantucket, where they have the heavy duty um, people that live out of town that have these heavy duty tax bills and, and the high, uh, high assessments right along the ocean. So they pay a premium and everybody that lives in town, first 100,000 they don't pay on. We don't have anything like that to rely on. So this is normally one that you would not adopt, um, but I felt like we should just at least discuss it. So if anybody comes forward and says, what does this mean? Now everybody has a little better idea. So if you want to do the motion to not accept. Yeah, I, I will make a motion not to accept the residential exemption. No, second. And then the last one is a small business Let's exemption. Vote. Vote. Oh, vote, okay. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The last one is small business exemption, and I don't know anywhere where, where this happens. It's probably designed more for cities. Um, it doesn't, it, it, what it does is it helps small businesses get going. In our case, what we would have to do is you would take, you know, let's say up to 10% of their value, and you'd put it on that big uh, industrial complex that we don't have. Yeah. So we would be shifting it amongst ourselves. So that, uh, although it, it sounds great, there's no benefit to the town of Brookfield. So again, I would propose that you vote not to adopt this. All right, I'd like to uh, make a motion not to uh, accept the small business exemption. I, I want, so, uh, do you have a question? I second for it, but let's do well, some discussion. Well, we can bring it up and discuss it. Yeah, okay. yeah, so I'll second, but a uh, little discussion around this one. Um, I think I'm on board with not doing it this year, but I'd, I'd like to understand, because I know with larger cities and towns, there are times where they offer a specific to an entity coming in. Like a tip. Exactly. Yep, that would be separate than this. That would be separate. Yes, so that would be would specific. So would still have the option if, if somebody came forward with a business proposal mm -hmm. Uh, but in order to get kicked off to do it, they, this were, is, they were looking for yeah. a, a little bit of a help. We could, yep. we could do something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Like, this is an across the board thing. So that yeah. you say, okay. and it has to be, the building's got to be worth less than a thousand a million dollars, yeah. 10 or less employees, right. um, which we probably have some that qualify. Mm -hmm. But again, we, you're not going to shift it anywhere. We don't have anywhere to put it. If we had uh, a General Motors plant, if we had yeah. a GE, if we right. had something like that, right. then you go to them and say, hey, can we shift one or two percent? And, you know, and, but we don't have that. So we, have we could adopt it, but it wouldn't do anything except confuse everybody, okay. and everybody would end up paying the same amount. No, but I a tip would be very different. But that's, we yeah, have that's very different. few businesses here in town, and plus a lot of them are your little mom and pop businesses. So. Right. So, so most everybody we have in town would fit the small business exemption. It doesn't have anywhere to go. If they own the facility, if, if they, they own the building too. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't own the building, then it's you know, if, if they're a tenant, then it would be a moot point. But, but you had actually answered my question, is if there was something specific that, that, that we were trying to generate, then, then we at least would still have that option. Either. Sure, just like a pilot. You know what I mean? It would be you know, it would be handled, I would assume, similar. It would obviously be different wording, but you would say, okay, for this period of time, we'll give you a break of 10%, 9%, 8%, 7%, you know, work it down to zero, okay. and then you're right on. That's the way I understand them. But. Okay, fair enough. Awesome, thank you. So do we want to take a vote? Yes. All in, all in favor of doing it? Aye. Aye. And then the second page of this is just a breakdown. This is what the state has approved. This gives you our 2018 parcel counts, 2019, and the changes in approved assessed values. Um, because we don't, if you look down at like uh, industrial power plant, you see a 100% increase. That's because we added two solar. So the, because we have such small numbers in some of these categories, you know, a couple of places shifted from three family to four family, and all of a sudden we're up, you know, uh, 12, 40 percent. I mean, there's all these. So yeah, so you don't look at the percentages, look at the numbers. 
And then we, if you'll see open space, and it's a zero. Very few towns qualify as open space. Our open space is all under Chapter 61. Mm -hmm. um, not all, but they, it falls under Chapter 61. Falls under commercial. So oh, okay. that's how that. So we're actually, it, it doesn't get taxed as <coughs> commercial, but that's where it comes through. So open space should be zero for us. So I do have a quick question. Sure. It looks like uh, uh, corporations is separate, is, is its own separate strata with this? Mm -hmm. I'd have to look up in this, but this is, there's under, under let's say corporations, there's a bunch of different like the wire uh, manufacturing yeah, next door could it probably falls into that because I don't because there's nothing in manufacturing right. mm -hmm. um, and it's it, it's it's yeah, a, I'm surprised it just doesn't just fall under industrial and that's all it seems odd that it gets its own category I'd have to look at the I mean again it, it really wherever it's categ categorized it really does not matter to us right. because they're going to pay the We're same the, same. Anyway. the ta tax rate stays the same across the board um, I, if you want me to look into that, I can. Um, it's okay. But it's, it's, it's minutiae. Again, it's when you look at it, you know, it, it shows you 60 different options. Right. Okay. And so, what is it? Is it industrial storage? Is it industrial manufacturing? Is it? Okay. You know, there's all these different classifications. Yeah, within yeah. it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Does that make it a little clearer? Because it's better than just. Cool. We're just talking, and then you're afterwards saying, "What the heck did we talk about?" So. And how are we doing on setting the tax rate? Um, we are. The tax title stuff got done today. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Seary finished all his stuff this week. Um, where the values are set, so we are Carrie's uh, t today and tomorrow, or tomorrow and Thursday. Mm -hmm. I think today and tomorrow she's going to be with Justin. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's on carry right now. A lion's share okay. of it is anyways. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that mid to late next week. So what happens, we have to dot, we have to fill out, I don't know, there's probably 25 different things. Yeah. We've probably done 12 to 14 of them now. But a bunch of them start, when Kerry starts filling in her numbers, they start populating other sheets. Okay. So once that's all done, it, it, uh, the bell goes off at the uh, DOR. Yeah. And they'll get on the phone and they'll come through and they'll say, hey, what's the question here? What's this? Why did this change? Um, I need to see uh, the, the actual published uh, tax classification hearing notice from the newspaper. They have all these things. And then it, once they are set, um, and it'll probably be, like I say, a week, week and a half um, on the our side, which is the billing piece, um, all the data is there. They checked off today. Everything married up, so they're happy. Uh, Brenda has half of the bill, the back half of all the bills printed. And uh, as soon as we get the okay, she'll stop printing. And what we're going to try to do this year is have, you know, like a half an hour, or everybody, the town employees, come on in. Let's all fill out rather than just. Um, Brenda or Brenda and me that, filling them out. We, we did that years ago. Do a yep. polling party. Just we do a quick polling party. Then, Even if we don't get them all, get oh, yeah. eighty percent of them, and then, and uh, you know, and have a little, uh, have a little fun with it too. So, so that's where we are. Okay, that's Excellent. good. Okay, I'll thank you. Our next one is with Andrew Lowe. If Andrew would like to come up. Right on top. Okay, we're going to do with Andrew, it's the FY17 CDBG performance hearing. Okay, I just have a handout I'm going to make available to folks in the audience. I'll be right back. I You folks already have this, I believe, in your package. Okay, so uh, again, my name is Andrew Lowe. I'm here from the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Um, I'm here tonight to do what's called a performance hearing. This is a, a hearing that's a required portion of a community development block grant. And uh, as I, I think uh, most people here will be aware, uh, CMRPC is uh, helping to, to manage um, 
two different CDBG grants on behalf of the town. This hearing relates to the first of those two grants. This is the FY17 CDBG grant. And just as a little summary here, so th this is a grant that ultimately starts with the U.S. Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development. And, oh, thank you. And it's um, passed through uh, from HUD to the Mass Department of Housing and Community Development, which operates a competitive grant program for smaller communities. Brookfield was lucky enough to be awarded about $364,000 for this grant. Um, again, it's FY17 grant. Um, and the purpose of this hearing is really just to give the board and, and uh, members of the audience an opportunity to comment or ask questions about the projects that are within the grant. So um, what I'll do is I'll just give a, a quick summary that's the same information that's on this handout of the four projects that are funded under this grant. Um, and uh, the first one is the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. I was actually here at your last meeting to talk about the draft final version of that plan. That plan is a, um, a planning consultant team was hired to help the town to evaluate its current compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act and related state statutes and to develop a plan for transition to greater compliance. So there was an evaluation of programs and services as well as a detailed review of all town facilities. Um, as I mentioned, the draft final plan is, is complete. I believe that the consultant team is uh, expecting to wrap that up by next week now, so it'll be a, a fully final plan. Uh, and I should say that completion of this kind of plan is a requirement of the ADA. So uh, having this plan uh, will enable you to seek a variety of other grants that you're not currently eligible for, uh, and it will also protect the town uh, liability-wise from concerns uh, on ADA, at least from some concerns on ADA. Uh, the next project uh, is the Hayden Hyde and Draper High Improvement Project <coughs> design phase project. So this is a civil engineering project. Uh, an engineering consultant was hired to design drainage, water, roadway, and pedestrian improvements in these two neighborhoods where existing infrastructure is outdated and or in poor condition. So bid ready plans and specifications were prepared to enable construction <coughs> and funds become available in the future. The Hayden Hyde design is complete, and I should say that the Hayden and Hyde area was the subject of the town's FY18 CDBG grant, which is going to fund construction in that area. Um, and, and the design in the Draper and High area is complete pending um, Mass Department of Transportation review of the proposed drainage improvements. And my understanding is that a meeting is scheduled for this week, um, or it will be scheduled by MassDOT. And when I say scheduled, they'll just say when they're going to be there, and then. Uh, the consulting team and, and the, the highway department folks have to just be there when they're out there. Uh, but once that's done, then, then the design phase will be completed in its entirety. Um, the next project is the 15 Post Road Environmental Site Assessment Study. That's the old uh, Finney service station site. That one is an environmental engineering project, and again, a consultant was hired uh, to do that one, and that was uh, uh, essentially the, the scope is to test the soil, groundwater, and other media at this former service station for contaminants and to make any required regulatory submittals for the site assessment. Uh, information from the study will inform the future cleanup needs and reuse options for the site and will enable the town to make a decision on potential acquisition of the site pursuant to future cleanup and redevelopment. So that one's underway right now. They've been out of the site over the last uh, month or so doing a variety of different kinds of sampling. I know they're going to be going back out again uh, before the, the uh, worst of the winter weather comes in, we hope, and uh, we should have the final report for that by the spring. Um, and, and we will be having a couple of public events um, as part of that, so once we get some information on that project, uh, we can talk a little bit more about what the contamination, if any, remaining means for potential reuse options um, at that site. Um, and the last project is the uh, Senior Center Architectural Design Project. An architectural consultant was hired to develop a program and a bid-ready design for rehab excuse me, rehabilitation of most of the lower level in this building uh, into a future senior center, so that it's kind of part of a, the, the larger effort to rehabilitate the, the building. Uh, that's uh, ongoing as well. That one will actually be having a public event on December 12th right here in this room. Uh, I believe it's at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, and we'll be talking a little bit more about what features folks would like to see from a future senior center in terms of uh, what components it has and, and how it's arranged. 
um, and then that will be translated into a more detailed design um, for a new senior center. So um, that's the quick summary of, of these projects. I'm happy to take questions from either the board or the audience um, about any of them. Pretty well set. Nobody has any <clears throat> well, I just the only thought that I have is that Kathy Lee Rock, our mm -hmm. grant writer facilitator, is participating and working with, very closely with Andrew because as Andrew went through these, what the, what these do is they set us up for additional grants and grant funding. So by Kathy being really shoulder to shoulder with Andrew and what Andrew is doing, it puts us in a position for Kathy to move forward with these additional grants. So, yeah, that's exactly the intention of, of all these projects is to be a first step with the follow-up actions to come right. later. And, and with regards to the um, construction phase that's part of the 2018 CB, CDBG, um, and uh, Herb, I see that you're, you're back there. Is, is this, are, are they in pretty direct, I know that Cindy's on the uh, CDBG. Uh, grant committee, but is is she tied in with what the planning is going to need to be around the the, the contract the, work yep. itself? Yeah, that's going off the business. When to to uh, start that project comes spring time. Fabulous. Okay, yeah. great. So that's going to be mostly contracted out. It's all going to be contracted. That one's all contracted. Oh, thank okay. You. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Herb and Peter have talked about chassis. Do you want to switch? Yeah, we have time. Yeah, we, yeah, we have time. Yeah. Okay. Why don't Why don't we bring up um, bring Herb and Peter up, and we'll discuss the cab. Uh, we're going to take it out of order into number six and discuss the the cab and chassis for the fire department. Do you want a motion to move it out of order or not? Yeah. Could I have a motion? You have a motion to move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Because um, at the special town meeting a couple weeks back, we did appropriate money because we ran into that issue where we had a failure on the chassis, on the 1986 chassis that houses Forestry 2. And we did have that opportunity to move money around uh, because that was on the CDB, not CDB, Capital Improvement Plan, CIPC plan for next June anyway. So putting money into a basically seven month wasn't practical. Um, the figure, I believe, was 46, 47.5, 47.6, something on those. I think it's 46.7. Okay. Um, we'll, a little bit of the so kicking right. around, but we'll, I'll get that from Mike or from Kerry. Um, we've looked around at chassis that are suitable with the plan being, the plan that was floated some time ago by the CIPC, that this truck would start its life with the fire department, then after a few years would be transition to the highway department. So we're basically looking at our needs and the highway department's needs down the road, and highway department's needs are a little bit more rugged, a little bit more, a little beefier for its long term, which worked out because that meant that whatever needs he has for it or his whoever at that point would definitely suit our needs. And what we came up with was what you have in front of you. This is from MHQ, which is the pretty much a preeminent public safety, public utilities contra uh, vehicle contractor in the state. Um, this truck, as you see, is a leftover. It's a 2016, but it was never moved. They they bought it. They they Usually all their stuff is all cookie cutter, but occasionally they buy something and just load it up completely. That way, if somebody comes out, they don't sell anything to the public. So this was always planned to be either a DPW or you know Parks Department or a fire truck. And since 2016, now we're in 20, 
model year 2019. It'll still be full warranty. It's only got a, maybe a couple hundred miles just probably moving it around the yard the last three years. Um, the original list price on this was, if I'm looking correctly, oh, it was actually much higher. Originally this truck was 44.6. Um, but when Herb spoke to these individuals, the salesman's on there, um, because they do want to move it and we'd express an interest, they came down to 40995 40, It does meet all the needs that the highway, that fire department needs initially and that the highway department would need in time. So I'm appearing before you, is asking your permission to go ahead on this. The fear, like always, is uh, this quote's good for 60 days, but if somebody shows up, is ready to move on it. Um, so I would. I'd, 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 I'd like to make a motion oh, okay. to accept the bid. No second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Aye. So, so that's 40,985. That gets us the chassis here. Um, we feel that we can outfit it with the warning devices. Uh, we don't need to buy switch. This actually has switches built into it, like modern Fords do. We have sirens from previous vehicles, but we will need some items to move the vehicle over. So it also asks that the balance, whatever the Dyslexia came out to be of the 40995 that we'd be authorized to spend up to what was appropriate at the STM to finish the outfitting. Um, relatively confident we can pull that off. If not, we'll see what we can do in-house or we'll just forego anything to the future. So, if you want to make a motion, if there's no objection. Oh, I'll, I'll make a motion to let, to let you spend uh, up to the 46000 yeah. 47.5. 47.5, okay. Whatever, whatever the appropriation was at the STM. Whatever, yeah. whatever we voted at the STM, yeah, okay. I'll make that motion. I'll okay. second that. Okay. So, in time. All in favor? So, in time, when, when this is on board, we'll have the RMV one form either from MHQ or from Mr. Joseph sign and then we'll just begin the process of registration and everything and you know um, it's best case when the next you know we should have the next couple weeks best case but I'll keep the board apprised through Karen as to our progress on it where we are. And okay. well, job well done. You went around looking. We did. We, um, I mean we checked just because we know them you know we checked our local friendly you know, Ford dealership for something newer with a lot less features it was 48. And here we're at 40,909 because because they want to move this. And the first thing, if you happen to look down on line five, it's white. Yeah. And when I that thought, came I up, like and shirt. when that came at the fire station, yeah. it was a uh, truck's white, and everybody just kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, "So, you know, we need a <laughs> truck." You know, <laughs> there's only a couple things we would have objected to. So, well, well, we're trying to get rid of your other white truck. Well, so, so we're, we're maintaining a, a, white a white truck. truck yes. Right? So. so. Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, now we'll go back uh, to number four. To regular order. Oh, to regular order on number four, we'll open space project, and I'll turn that over to Mr. Snyder. So you should have in your folder, maybe not, um, the contract. Oh, okay, so, all right. So we have a contract. We have been sent by the, the grant administrators, the contract for our uh, for funding up, up to ten thousand dollars of uh, a grant uh, for the open space work. Uh, what we had all talked to along is that CMRPC would actually, in fact, similar to the CBDG, they would administer this one, and then we would then have uh, Kathy. Participating so that any follow on grants related to open space would actually be conducted that way. What I was hopeful of doing tonight, but uh, CMRPC did not get a chance to get it to us, is a letter that outlines their scope of supply or their commitment to the project. So, what I would say is uh, because it didn't get in for this meeting, well, let's put it on the agenda for the next meeting. But this gives us an opportunity to uh, solicit anybody that is interested in s uh, sitting on the open space committee to in fact let Karen know that there's an interest on their half, behalf to, to begin to participate because what I would hope that we do is we sign the contract at the next meeting and that with, based on the MOU with CMRPC and that we would then very early in the year, uh, new year we would kick off the open space with the plan that that would be finished in June so that that will put us in position for the next fiscal year to go after additional grant monies. So that's 
the plan. So again, I, I would solicit anybody that's interested in open space and recreation to come together uh, at, at a time. We'll get it in the citizen for the first of uh, January, so we'll, the time will be out there for everybody. But if you have an interest in sitting on the open space committee, we would welcome uh, participation from all facets, young and old, because again, it's not just uh, the Tobin campground or or the monuments or whatever. Like, uh, it, it's all of these things that need to be looked at, look, looked upon. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Our, our next one is, um, it's a hearing, what's it, seven? Yeah, we're just yep. making it. It's a hearing on the Brookfield Auto on um, Post Road over here. Gentlemen, would you like to come up? Thank and we have a gentleman here in the uh, audience that will probably come up and tell his complaint. Mm -hmm. And then we also, this is uh, one that also went to uh, the Attorney General's office, the Consumer Complaint Form, that somebody filed also. That's one of the complaints. That's one of the complaints to that. Okay, so. You, gave, you all have copies. Do you have copies? Do you have copies of We have... Um, I only have okay, we, uh, one. Yeah, that one I know. Yeah, we'll have right, we only have the two. That's the gentleman that's right here, so maybe he can just speak. Okay, okay. that's fine. Okay. So how do we want to handle this going over? Well, there's different time periods also. I don't know if you're familiar. What we had is we had, you know, the business that was done prior to May of this year. And it was under different sales management, and now it's <laughs> completely different sales management. So things are being done dramatically different way. So uh, even though this has happened, uh, we try we are trying to address all of these complaints the best way we can. But again, you know, we are we have different procedures in place right now. So you know, whatever is being done is actually customers are talked to, make sure that uh, it's all satisfactory, you know, whether it's a service or sale of a car. So it's, you know, follow up on all of these procedures in a completely different way than it was done before. So, I mean, unfortunately, we cannot return the past, but, um, you know, whatever we can help, um, you know, whatever the complaint is to resolve it, uh, we will try to do, and we're still working on it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get any of these complaints, and we didn't get them at the business, because, you know, if I knew about them, it's best to resolve them right at the time that they happen, not wait so much and people get aggravated and, you know, they start complaining everywhere else. That's not the way to do it. But, uh, you know, what I'd like to ask you guys, if it's ever possible, if you get a complaint, mail it to us right away, because sometimes what happens, people will get upset and they will not talk to anybody else except they'll go to you or they'll go to the state and they will not communicate to us. Well, maybe we could have done something uh, to remedy the situation. Um, well, I was, I was up here um, when two of them had come in one time mm -hmm. and they were both, you know, they were both senior citizens. Right. And one of them said that uh, his credit has never been, he's always had good credit and one of them, his credit is gone now because of an incident that happened with you. And he was very, you know, he, he was very disheartened about the whole thing. That's the thing, you know, this whole situation was continuing for a while. I wish he could, you know, he complained to either you well, or when, you know, wrote direct letter to the business this well, way. He said, he said that he went over and he talked to your salesman you had over there and they couldn't, they wouldn't help him out. That's part of the problem. Because, like I said, you know, that we had sales management that was not acting the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I wish this was communicated even through a letter so I could receive it at the mailbox and I could, you know, go and because I'm not there like 200% of the time, so sometimes I'm not there and things happen. But as you know, you know, sometimes when salespeople do wrong things, they will not communicate it further because, you know, they're afraid for their, 
a job or whatever, and there's a motivation not to communicate. But if I had another channel of communication, I'd definitely address the issue. I don't do business like that. But unfortunately, this whole situation with that gentleman was continuing for a while, actually. It was not just, you know, because his payment was months, probably two months. And there was no communication whatsoever except with the salesperson who obviously did not communicate any further for obvious reasons. Because, you know, there was uh, reason to okay, so and not to communicate and then another one we had also here was about um, somebody had some worn tires on the vehicle and I guess he came over to you and he, you gave him a, told him he could obtain the tires at a, a lower cost from you and I guess um, the tires were much higher than what he originally quoted. Well this is actually, I'll explain it a little bit more. Michael Master Tutorial? Mm -hmm. Right, um, Michael is, is, as I explained, Karen is a friend of the garage. He's a friend of the shop. Michael um, has driven cars for us. Michael's been around for some time. Uh, Michael actually helped me get into some places. And um, so I don't really understand how this all came about. So. Because <clears throat> I was here the day he came up on this, this one too, and he was pretty upset about it. Right. Um, so what I brought was just a couple pieces so you'd understand. So Michael tried to get a loan for $1,000 at the bank to try to get some tires and some work done on his vehicle. The bank would only advance him 500 So because Michael's, I mean, Michael's helped us out a lot. And um, I said we'd try to get him some tires for less expensive. And we did some work on his vehicle. So what I did is I have a copy of the repair order that we did on work on the vehicle. And actually I have a copy of the tires that we purchased from Kyle's up the street. If you want a copy of those, you can take a look at them. I mean, I charged Michael the... It was $482 for everything. Um, you can see even on the markup on the tires, it was just enough money to cover the half hours worth of labor that I paid my technician. He gets $25 an hour. So um, I don't understand what happened because when a week prior to that, Michael was really happy with the purchase, but it seemed as though the day after he got his sticker was when he started having problems with the tires. The day after he had everything squared away, was when he seemed to be complaining well, about everything. He says here that um, the tires, he says here the tires um, that were put on, that you didn't balance them or you didn't align the front end of his vehicle. And he said that the vehicle was sh uh, shaking and rattling uh, all over the road. And he told that the tires were, from, were with the same warranty. They were town fair tires. So he said he called, I guess he called you on October 2nd, and you never returned his call. He said he stepped in um, to get some advice. He wasn't happy with the tires. And he's, he, he was told to get off the property, and he, it, it, if he didn't get off the property, he'd be arrested. And he said that ended the conversation. Actually, yeah, he called me on the 2nd. I have the voicemail still on my phone. And, that, and this is when he filed a complaint with the consu uh, consumer complaint form with the Attorney General's office. Yeah, Michael called me on the 2nd. Uh, he left me a voicemail. Um, and he came in the next day. And he said he wanted his money back for his tires. And I said, okay, guys, I, you know, there's no... Uh, he says, I've called everywhere, including Cooper. Cooper said I can get my money back. I said, no problem. Um, as long as I can be made whole, you can be made whole. I have no problem giving you money back. He goes, no, you don't understand, Artie. I want my money back. I says, no problem, Michael. I'll just call Cooper. If Cooper told you you can get your money back, let's call Cooper, see who you spoke with. If I can be made whole, you can be made whole. I'll give you your money back. No problem at all. And he said, no, I'm not going to eat these tires. I said, well, Michael, I'm not going to eat them either. If somebody told you you can get your money back, I'm more than willing to give it to you. He says, Artie, I'm getting a lawyer. And he said, when he threatened me with a lawyer and other things that he stated, I said, you know what, this conversation is done, you can leave my property. So yes, I did state that to him. So you tried to resolve it, but I mean, it's like the shoes, you know, once you wear them, I mean, who's going to take them back? Or well, the Cooper, in this case, they were willing to exchange for a different model, whatever they could do, but they don't give the money back. And you know, did it's you? like, it's, there's no way to, I mean, any shop out there, there's no way to return tires once you get them, unless they're defective. But they're not defective, they're just different model that he didn't like. 
although he was looking for the best deal, he had limited resources, that was the best deal for him. Nobody pushed him, I think he wrote in there that somebody pushed him into this purchase. Right. Nobody pushed him into this purchase. He had limited budget, he had to meet you know, certain requirements, and he agreed to it. You know, we would not go and buy tires for somebody without the agreement. That just doesn't make any sense. And we didn't even make any profit on it. We just, you know, tried to help him. That's all it is. And you know, he turned around and made it look like, you know, somebody just, you know, took, dropped his car, put the tires on, you know, didn't ask him anything about it. But of course, you know, I understand he is unhappy. But you know, we are in business of installing tires. We're not manufacturer of the tires. I mean, and the, just, you know. The manufacturer, and I thought I had a copy of the email with all this stuff. Did you go by any chance? Mm, probably not. Because I had a copy of the email from Cooper, because I was actually on, Cooper that's how I fine. found out about the issue, they, was that Cooper uh, contacted me, and we emailed back and forth, and I had a, I had a copy of the, I apologize, I thought I did have it with me, um, where there was contact back and forth with Cooper stating that he was calling them, looking for his money back. They stated the same thing that everybody else told him, which is be more than happy to exchange them. But not give you your money back. That is not how we do business. So. And we had no motivation to sell him these Cooper tires if he wanted some other tires because we have a tire distributor or something, you know, whatever the customer wants, we'll order. It doesn't mean, you know, if we don't have any preference for selling Cooper tire or, you know, Goodyear tire or whatever. If that's what you want, that model, you know, we'll get it to you as long as it's safe to drive. That's all. That's and the basic idea. I mean, I called Kyle's myself with Michael standing next to me in my service department. And they were $85 a tire, and, and I said, how, can you give them our price? And they said, no. I said, how much would you sell them to me for? And they told me, I mean, it was the $63, and I said, okay, I gotta pay him $12.50 or $12, 13 bucks, whatever it is, to put them on. Are you okay with that? He says, yes, that's why they're $76 instead of $85. So, I mean, even if you call Kyle's and find out, there was nothing made in the tires. There was no advantage taken to Michael at all. We have a gentleman here that tonight, and he, he brought his complaint on December 4th today. So, would you like to come up forward? Give him some space. I don't mind speaking. I know, I know Boris, and I know his brother Alex from JK and Auto down in Webster. Um, when I met these gentlemen, when I met Boris, it was uh, October 2017, they just opened up. And his partner, was a gentleman by the name of Christopher Cardinelli, who also had been employed down at J.K. Um, I began negotiations. I, I heard this same repeated thing over and over. Low income, elderly, disabled. I'm a disabled veteran myself. I broke my neck. Um, I'm doing pretty well now. But there's, there's also a same pattern I'm hearing about the end result of complaints, which is get the hell out or I'm gonna have you arrested, because this happened to me also. In this negotiation, I went in and Chris told me he bought a Jeep, it was down at JK Auto, it was being repaired. It was in good shape, they were putting a motor in it, and it would be purchased for $5,000. Uh, it took about six weeks to finally get this Jeep here. There was Every week that they said they were going to be up with it, it was another thing. The motor was bad. They wanted next week because they wanted to get better tires. These things might happen, but it was a delay, delay, delay. Finally, right around the end of October, the Jeep showed up and it was $8,000. Uh, I agreed that if I could get financing, and he said he'd go to the West of Federal Credit Union, to buy the vehicle. When the vehicle went up to finance, the bank would only allow me $7,000 on it. And I told Chris, I said, I don't have $1,000 to put in it. He says, we can make a deal on this. Before I took off that day for the bank, Chris presented me with a, uh, a weekly pay stuff that he had made up. And he said, if you need this at the bank, use this. No, they're not going to give me the money based on what I presented to them. My honest income, my social security, my top part-time work. It ain't going to go. Went to the bank and they gave me the $7,000 and I came back with a check and I presented it to him. And he proceeded to ask me what I had to make up the balance of the $1,000. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm proud to say this in public down here. Uh, 
15 years prior to that, after, after I broke my neck, uh, I became a medical marijuana grower, a legal one. And I had a lot of grow equipment that I was willing to trade in for. I, I did. I gave him approximately $1,800 worth of lights in Dallas and equipment, which he negotiated in trade, and we made the transaction based on this. And I got the title, and I got the bank of the title, and but before we finished, his mechanic and myself went, and, and my son, because I didn't have a vehicle, my son brought me there, we went out and walked around the car to check it out. At which time, I, both the mechanic, whose name was Don, your primary mechanic, who was involved in the transaction with Chris Carnelli, your, your owner, your, your partner, there was a tear in the top. Um, there was only four tires. A spare tire was a, you know, there was a big tire that he put on it. And, uh, small tire in the back, I said, you know, I need a spare tire, so I had a spare tire. My son put his hand underneath and put, a, put his hand through a panel that holds the gas tank up. What they had done is put duct tape on it, spray painted it black, and this will be fixed. I'm fine with this. They say they're going to do it good. I believe it or not, I became employed with these people. I worked for them for a month. I would run errands to the registry, pick up checks down in Saugus, bring cars back and forth, transport. Uh, at the end of December, I got a, a, a letter, a, a phone call from the insurance company. Uh, to me insurance, I think they say it, it was where it was done. And what it was is uh, they had problem payroll deduction insurance was going to be canceled. So I went into work and I said, hey, Chris, can you, can you take care of this? Can you, Give me my pay so I can pay my the insurance. He says, well, I ain't got no money, but my wife's going to be in Webster today. She'll pay it. I said, great, thanks. Because you're doing this favor, I will bring you a, a collateral for this transaction. I'll bring you nine more of these electrical ballasts. You know, you're doing me a favor, I'm going to do you a favor. In collateral, what a loan you give me until I can pay you off. A month later, I get news from the insurance company that the double payment done never paid the bill, never fixed the equipment, I can't get my equipment back. I went to the police station, and when I went to get it back, he said, get out or I'm gonna call the cops. I own it, it's part of the Jeep transaction. Went to the police department, they said, well, we've had a lot of complaints, it seems like a civil problem, you're gonna to have to take them to court. They closed down, before they close down, they have a yard sale over here. Chris Cardinelli throws a yard sale. My son goes to the yard sale and he runs into this equipment. He confronts Mr. Cardinelli and says, that's my father's equipment. He says, your father owes me money for the GPO. This is in public. My father owes you, your father owes me money for the GPO. I'll take the first 50 bucks I get and he sold them. Right there in front of my disabled son gone through Chiari surgery. I waited a couple weeks because I'm kind of patient and I went down to JK Auto to talk to Alex and Morris. Who was there but Chris Cardinelli? He threatened me with, if your son doesn't touch, stop talking trash about me, I'm going to take him to court. He says, is Alex and Scott here? And he says, they don't want to talk to you, get out. So I got thrown out of there. July comes around and I see it's open again. This gentleman, they talk about changing patterns, nothing's changed. I went in there in July. The first thing I says, is, he get, is this guy still tied up to this place? And this is why. And I explain him the story. He goes, oh no, no, he's not at all involved in this. And I'm saying, this is weird, it's the same phone number. He says, bring it in now, I'll, I'll take care of that for you. Now, I can't afford to have it fixed. He's denied being involved with this gentleman, so I let it go. I come to the town hall and I find Don's on me. I can find out if, if he's still over there, have they taken out a new business permit? If they are. And that's when I find out that this meeting's coming up. That it's still under the same ownership. So I tell the young lady my story and she says, write it down. So equipped with everything that I know now, I go over there and I said to a young lady at the front desk, 
I'm here to talk to Boris. Gee, Boris who? Now, Boris doesn't have anything to do with this place. I tell her the story, and all of a sudden, Boris is in the meeting in the back room. So we meet up. So we meet up in the back room. I explain him my story. And we just about work everything out. He wants to fix everything, with an exception of the equipment that his partner confiscated. I said, well, let me think about this. I came back today. I told this gentleman over here, I said, I want to talk to you about this. I think you're responsible for it. You, you, your partner made a point in public of saying it was part of a Jeep transaction. He stole my equipment. If you make a million dollars with your partner, your share, he wanted to sell. Chris had nothing to do with me. We've gotten rid of him. We've gotten rid of our problem. I went in today and they said, no. Nope. This gentleman says, no, nope, we don't want to do that. Come to the meeting tonight. So here I am, a year later, multiple times being told it's going to take you. One time Chris told me, oh, the parts at JK. I went down to JK. No pops down there. So here I am sitting here. I don't know what you can do for me, but I think you can do something for other people in this town. They haven't changed. They haven't even begun to change. This man was at honest in July when I asked him, are you still connected to this in order to solve my problem? And he tried to deflect it. He wasn't forthright. He may not be partners, but he was involved. And this is a pattern. I don't think it's going to change. They're not helping me. We we have had, these are the three written ones we have had, and we had a lot of verbal complaints where people wouldn't come in. Yeah, and, uh, people you are know, scared. Yeah, they're scared. They wouldn't put in a writing. They've been down to talk to uh, the police and everything, and the police have told them they really couldn't do too much about it. And the best thing would do a verbal complaint and come up here and give it to us. And, and, it's time and I, I think the one that went to the Attorney General is because I, I know I had a conversation with the police a while back mm -hmm. and recommended that they direct me to the attorney yeah, general. That's what they were going to do. So there's a valid business permit or not? Yeah. But now, who's the business certificate in now? Well, it's not, it's a liquor license. As far mm -hmm. as the business it's a liquor license. Yeah, as far as the business Board of Selectmen is a liquor license. You'd have to talk to Mike about the business permit. They do a business permit. Well, no, we do the auto dealer. We no, do the, the auto, auto dealer. dealer. Right, right, right. Not the use of liquor. Oh, I'm sorry. Auto dealer. I'm sorry. Because we're doing the liquor. No, last two. But the thing is, I probably have fewer complaints if they were selling liquor instead of cars. Have come up and taken out a new business certificate with the town clerk and with the change of people that are running the business now. Can we at least respond to this? Yeah, can I respond to what he just stated? Is that possible? Because you know, that's a nice story. Oh, all right. You want to? But please respond. All right. Respond. All right. Because that's response I was told. I did see him in July because actually when he came in the other day asking for a three thousand dollar check for his ballast, I recognized him. I asked him if he was the gentleman in the yellow jeep. In July, I did offer to repair his vehicle after hearing his story. If you check with the police department, you'll notice that I have a complaint in there against Chris Cardinale ever coming into the establishment ever. So you can check with them. There is a complaint on file from me personally to keep him out of the establishment. And who are you, sir? I'm just the manager there. What's but your name, though? Arthur Master Mateo. Okay. So my history in the industry is 40 years long. Mm -hmm. My job prior to coming to this place is to come into stores and repair them when they're dysfunctional. My job is to make sure everything is legal, upright, forthright, and make sure everything is taken care of properly. So, um, Yes. And when did you start with the organization? I came into the organization July 22nd. Was when I unlocked the door. And then probably four or five people a day came walking in there telling me what I owed them. So I do understand what you've heard. Yeah. I'm not, I am not unaware of what's been going on there. So we have a valid business permit, as I understand it. Um, well, it's good. The one that he has now is it's a class two license, yep. and it's good until the end of 2018. He's applying for the new one, the 2019, and that's why we're having the hearing. And yep. it's all under Boris's name. He's the one who 
the license has been on. So mm -hmm. if a complaint comes in tomorrow, who gets notified? If a complaint, if it's filed, going to be Boris. It'll still be Boris, right? Boris that would be a beautiful situation. If I know right away right. what's happening. That's right. really what needs to be I've done. spoken to probably, I've met probably 40% of this town just in, gosh, just in complaints that people that have told me things that have happened. And even in regards to Michael, and just again, I understand what Michael, what happened when Michael went way, way, way overboard. I mean, Michael invited me to his 72nd birthday party and it was canceled by his friends. And I personally took him to the tavern that night for his birthday. So I don't understand how it got to be at that level in which it got to be. So um, I even asked friends of his that. This gentleman was in my store yesterday. I was in between auctions. I was at CarMax auction in the morning and I went to the Norwood auction in the afternoon. He asked for me for my time. He asked that the $1,500 would be more acceptable than the $3,000 he was looking for two days earlier when Lois was in to get an oil change. When he burst in the door, he did not, nobody played stupid that Boris was there. We all know who Boris is. So again, it's unfortunate what is being happening here. When Michael got upset with me, one of the other things that Michael said about his attorney was, I know your reputation, I can say anything about your store, everybody will believe me. I know what I'm dealing with over there. It really is unfortunate what happened in an eight month span is ridiculous. I love what I do for work. I'm very proud of what I do for work. I don't like what people do to my industry at all. It's a, it can be very helpful to a lot of people. Um, it's a nice neighborhood. It's a nice area that this is around here. I've met a lot of people. I've done a lot of community service around here and been able to meet a lot of people that way. I mean, we were at the tree lighting with the Rotary Club in Warren. I've been to the Rotary Club meetings over at the tavern. I've met Lynn. I've, I mean, we've met a lot of people through here. I even, I mean, every month we do something different. Um, last month we did the Toys for Tots run. We were calling everybody. And I mean, my girls took a beating, if you can imagine this, a beating calling around for Toys for Tots because they would say that, you know, we're calling for Toys for Tots. We gave away an synthetic oil changes, which are $89 most places if you go to them. For, if you bring us a toy for a tot, we'll give you a, an oil change for free. If you don't need one, we'll give you a certificate. You can give it to somebody as a gift or bring them back another time. And is this something you're interested in? They, they say yes, and they go, okay, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Brookfield Auto. No, and slam the phone down on them. I know what I'm dealing with there. It's horrible. It's horrible what happened. It is horrible. But we've offered to help him. I've offered to fix his car twice, and he's refused both times. That part is also horrible. We had a customer, as soon as we changed the management, there was a customer that came in. There was a, we let, no, why don't we let Boris finish? There was a customer that came in. She, even though it was out of warranty, out of everything, she came in with the Highland Toyota Highlander or whatever. Yeah, she needed four new tires. She needed a motor in the back of her, you know, wiper or whatever. I took out of my personal money, $800, just to get the reputation good after all this. Mm -hmm. And I bought parts and we, you know, changed the tires. We did everything we were supposed to do. I didn't even say anything because that's important so that people think it's all perfectly fine. But again, I don't run businesses like this, okay? If I have a <clears throat> legitimate complaint that comes to me, I deal with it. I don't hide from it. No. I don't hide from any customers. It's not my style. But the problem is, in this type of situation, I found out about, about these things, like, kind of in a later state where it's supposed to be. And I'm just trying to change that if I can, which means, you know, that we can deal with it right away. Now, you know, it might look like something else from the from outside or whatever, but really, if I get, I'm I'm for resolution of problems, and specifically not this way or any other way. Okay, this is much easier way. You talk to people. Okay, right. so but in order to talk to people, you need to know what's going on, and in order to know what's going on, obviously, you know, unfortunately, sometimes. You know, you can't be there like 24 hours a day. Sometimes, you know, you trust people to do the right thing for you and they don't perform. And then you find out all this bunch of problems. And uh, another thing what I want to mention is that we do not deal in any other property but financial instruments, which is cash, uh, you know, check, uh, whatever, MasterCard, Visa. We don't barter. We don't do anything. So no. what was done here is very, very unfortunate. But we don't deal with, as a business, we don't deal with any financial instruments except money. 
Okay, so um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, this was kind of deals made and all this stuff. I find out like he came to our business and talked to me about the situation. Was it three days ago? To me personally, yes, I finally caught up. With it. Right. So three days three days ago, I found out about this whole situation. We're going to start find out more in July if you manage it. But what's right? Said, oh yeah, you know what? Boris needs to see blow it over these little things. He had the motivation, I'm sure. But yeah, yeah, he had, had oh, a reason oh, to just, stop. Just one at a time, please. Yeah, but my point is, if I had the communication somehow, mm -hmm. even simple letters, to, you know, in the name of the business, because I pick mail, <laughs> so it would not have bypassed me in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, if there's been an issue that's come in the door that was an actual blatant issue, he did know about his fuel tank. I did get approval from him to fix it. He did know about the Highlander because the young lady came in, and it was an alignment issue. It was not a tire issue. We replaced all four tires. We did replace the wiper motor. We did replace all those things because of a $39 alignment that she should have had, and she was promised when she bought the truck. Mm -hmm. The tires should have lasted longer. This is not in my and best these are little interest problems, right. to do these types of things. <clears throat> I, mean, I might as well close the doors. Why do I need business like this? You know, we want customers to be happy. I was, I was, I, personally, I was happy to see you uh, coming into town because you know we need more business here in town right. but it just seems ever since you've been here we've heard complaints and I mean if you're going to stay in business I just I hope we don't hear any more of these complaints. Exactly. So right. have you maintained any documentation about things that you've set right since you've taken over? Like, sure. Um, okay. I mean I haven't really put anything down in writing we just kind of done whatever we've done. I mean I haven't said it you know I don't put a list of Here's a list of all the good things we've done. I mean, I can put something together if you'd like to, but. I mean. There's things I haven't well, done because so, I knew this so, meeting so was I coming. Have a, I, right, well, there may be some things that you, you haven't done because you know, know that this meeting is coming, okay? But one of the things that, that I kind of take issue with is that I would presume, yep. and I don't know what kind of financial interest the other, who was the other manager that you're saying it was Christopher Cardinale used to be the manager. Okay. He's so not did, a partner. Did he have any? He did. Did no. he have any financial? No. He, was he dismissed? Did he leave of his own accord? I asked him to leave. Okay. Because this, uh, you know, I've heard aside from these complaints, I've heard some other things, but I didn't know the magnitude, obviously. Uh, but uh, I, you know, we decided that that's the best way because, you know, and obviously Arthur here is the complete opposite. So, and you can see, like from July. I believe, unless you can tell me otherwise, except for Mike, there's nothing there. So you can maybe check. I don't think there's anything there. Have a I mean, I can give you letters from people that we know. This one, this one doesn't. Something. And another this thing is, no, when we do these that. things uh, for community, for people, it's not because we want, because of the hearing or because mm -hmm. of any other things. It's good for business, it's good for the community, it's good for everybody. It's not done because of this hearing. I mean, it has nothing to do with it. We want a good reputation, not bad reputation. Yeah. And obviously, there were some things that were done to diminish the reputation. Okay. But we are doing everything. We're spending our own time calling people and explaining, you know, and doing this, you know, uh, Toys for Tots program. It's our own money we're investing to do this to help community, to help whoever it's helping to. So it's not about. It's just to kind of get the people to come in and say and meet us and see who we really are. Because yes, you're right. I mean, it's. It's fearful. You hear these stories, and for the girls to be hung up on, we're talking about a Toys for Tots program. It's a helpful, it's a beautiful well, program. I, well, yeah, you know what, I get it, but I tell you what, we are also inundated with freaking phone calls from, you know, and you never know who's truly on the other end of the phone that you sure. can say I'm from the... the, the oh, no, I understand the, that. Know. Yes, I understand. Uh, all right. Uh, you could you could be Mother Teresa and you get hung up on in this day and age. So I'm just yes. Yeah. Okay, we. Um, but, yeah, I know Sharon. Well, Sharon, I know Sharon. Sharon had her hand up. Um, <coughs> you'll have to pardon my voice. I'm getting over bronchitis. I'm chair of the planning board. Some months ago, I got a call from a gentleman who told me that he owned Dunphy's Tavern in East Brookfield and said he had been approached by someone from Brookfield Auto asking him to run yard sales or flea markets weekly at this business. And he asked me, as a member of the planning board, what would be required. Well, I talked with Jeff Taylor, and Jeff informed me that this would need a permit. So I informed this gentleman, you need a permit for this, and moreover, the planning board would probably want to see 
that you have permission from, first of all, Brookfield Auto, mm -hmm. and second of all, permission from the owner of the property that is being leased by Brookfield mm -hmm. Auto. Mm -hmm. I never heard from this gentleman again. Tonight, I heard that a yard sale slash flea market was held on the property. The other question I have is, there are tracked trailers, the last time I checked, from intercity lines sitting on your property. I'd like to know what relationship those trailers have to your business. Intercity Lines is located down the street of Route 9 toward West Brookfield. What are those trailers doing on your property? Can you uh, give us the dates of these things? No, I can't because I didn't expect this to come up tonight. Sure. But I'd like to know what those trailers were doing on your property. Well, remember, Mr. Summers, I've had them back there. He's collecting five dollars a month from there. Are they still there? No, 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 they've been gone. We have yeah, no, we, uh, when they oh, were no, there. When we got there in July, they yeah, were there. Yeah, we complained, you, and they, they, they were there in July. Off. Mr. Cardinale had... because they weren't supposed to be there? Right. Correct. Right. How yes. did somebody get tracked to trailers on your property without you knowing about it? It seems that Mr. Cardinale had them renting $500 a month he was collecting from Ms. That's Peterson. another one of those things. <laughs> yes. Um, I had heard rumors that Mr. Cardinale had a criminal record. Yeah. I can't confirm that. So I'm not surprised here. Yeah, this. we all heard that. Yeah. The, uh, the third question I have is, I checked your website about the time that this gentleman called, and I just checked it again now. The only, the only contact method you have on the website is a form that is done through the website and the address of the business. I don't know how often you're on the property, but, but people, yeah. compl let me mm -hmm. finish, please. Okay, sure. people complained that they were sending documents to you or sending complaints to you and they would disappear. I'd like to know who is in charge of checking the website for contact information. And if there's a second address, Mr. Postgolfer, that you can be contacted, excuse me, contacted directly without it going through the business address. I will double check on that, but if I understand correctly, uh, the information that you put on the website goes to my email as well. So I'm not sure, but I'll double check on it. Yeah, info uh, at Brookfield Auto is where I stop. Okay, the person on. doesn't have a computer. Well, How can they contact you directly? Because I know you own a number of businesses around the state. Right. And the addresses for your personal mailing address are not the, the address of this business. So how can people contact you directly if they do not want to go through Brookfield Auto? Well, the simplest way is if they write to 14th Post Road, it will go because we rent the P.O. Box because the mail service does not deliver there. So it will be forwarded to the P.O. Box where, which is for the business here in town. The way the Postal Service operates, sir, is if you have a P.O. Box, you need to put the P.O. Box in the letters. The P.O. Box doesn't appear anywhere on your website. Okay, we'll correct that. Look at that. Right, even had an overnight packet that I had to go pick up today that came in from Florida and it went to the post office, they wouldn't deliver to our address. Yeah, but we'll, we'll put we'll it on the, on, the, yeah. on the website as well. What I'm saying is, sir, is you have to keep better tabs on what's going on in your business, number one, so that items, things that are happening that are not permitted under the zoning bylaws don't happen. And number two, you have to make it easier for your customers to contact you without fear that their letters will disappear somehow between the time they're mailed and the time that you pick up the mail at 14 Post Road. Okay, so we'll yeah, make sure the information is thank there. Thank you, Sharon. So that brings up the point. So that the address that we have on the permit for the auto, does it have the correct post office box? Post office box. Check it's out on the back. Let's ask. No, let's Oh. Let's check now. Yeah, the yeah. paperwork is not asking. You have to have the, uh, we sent you a new renewal. Right. And yeah. put that address on that renewal. Oh, well, you just want to tell us. Oh, the con con that yeah, right here. I have to take a look at it. It's right there. Is it correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have the correct yeah. address. I don't know if this is, oh, I think I typed this in. I'm not sure what you have in your letter. Okay, then I'm going to make sure. This is for renewal. Well, I'm I'm typing. Because I Maybe have, yeah. it's not there. This, has, this has 14 Post Road, Brooklyn, Mass. Right, but that's right. the license. That's not for our contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Karen. <coughs> all right, so I'll back. So, all right. Because I, um, we should have, or we should have where we, Karen can get in touch with you, maybe personally, phone number and everything, in case sure. we have more complaints that come in. 
Yes, I'd like to hope we don't have any more complaints. Well, I mean, if any other complaints come Please. in, I think, in, well, like you said, you wanted to hear directly no, no, definitely. from us, you know, yes. what these complaints are so that Absolutely. you can solve them immediately. Yes. Yes. Because, I mean, you know, it doesn't give the town a very good reputation mm. with the business coming in, you know, it's bad, so people can think, any kind of business can think they can come in here and, you know, you know pull, do the same thing that was right. going on earlier in your business. Right. So, so I want reputable businesses here in the town. Sure. I have a question okay. for you, Madam Chair. Um, it sounds like we still have an unresolved yeah. complaint here. So. Yeah. It, but it sounds like you all have had negative exchanges, so so it's it's potentially not going to get resolved between the two of you independently. So what portion of and I'm sorry, sir, I'm going to mess up your name. Brio. I'm sorry. Brio. 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 Okay. Um, what portion of his? concerns or claims did I hear you can see that needed to get addressed with regards to his vehicle? Well, in regards to his vehicle, we offered twice. It, he had a fuel tank issue where it was sagging, where it was falling out of the car in July. And I'm assuming it still is, unless you, have you fixed it as of yet? No, I haven't fixed it. Right, so we offered in July to look at it and fix it at no charge. And we offered again the other day to fix it at no charge. That's not the complaint, though, is it? It's the ballast. Well, three, fine, uh, yeah, it's the it's reimbursement three. for the ballast that you and Mr. Cardinale exchanged, which has nothing to do with the auto purchase. It, it sounded it's like the, it separate. sounded like there was also supposed to be direct direct withdrawal from his paycheck while he was an employee that was going to pay his insurance. No, what what, what happened was it was direct payroll from my private bank for my social security check. Okay. But they tried to get it up too early, and they could only do it once. Yep. So when that happened, they stopped making the payment. So it was anything to do with these gentlemen. I've been working for them. They owe me some money, and that's how I asked for the, the loan to pay the or the advance to pay the insurance company. Uh, but as far as the office to repair, the reason I didn't take them up on it in July is obvious because he said he had no connections. Thereby, I couldn't understand why he would be doing this for nothing, you know, fix it. And there were three items. There's a torn top, which originally was just either supposed to be stitched or welded or something. It's a black top. Uh, the tire to match the four other tires, so if there's a black, you can drive it. And the gas tank. There were three items. And the fourth item was the ballast that his employer took, his employee, he says now, took from him. And wouldn't let me get them in the shop. And I didn't ask for that amount of money. I told them what they were retail worth and told them, listen, they would use, I'd take 50%, but I'd like, you took them. I'd like to get reimbursed for these things. And that's where the difficulty came the second time we spoke was they didn't feel they wanted to do that and he wanted to do the repair just on the tank and there was other items involved. Uh -huh. Karen. You need the telephone okay. number and the so uh, PO box. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Her question. It's just I've been listening to all this, and I'm saying, why are people needing to complain to the selectmen for a business? They should have a, a, a procedure set up to handle complaints on their own, so it shouldn't have to go to the selectmen. You think? Yeah, it's like are you guys employed by these guys, so we, we, the town paying a salary to take care of these guys' complaints. If you got a complaint, it should go to you. It's when they can't get handled, when they get threatening and bullying. That you can't do it, you gotta come here. I've been doing this a year, this is baloney. If you'd have been honest with me in the beginning, and I see it, he says he's talked and heard about all these problems, but nobody's asked him, how many have you fixed? Well, I actually, I did. I asked him what the documentation they had. Yeah. So. Okay. I gotta go. I don't think there's gonna be yeah. resolved. Okay. Looks like it goes back to where I said that I gotta go to court with this thing. Well, well, it sounds, that's, your decision. that's your decision. If that's your decision, that's what you have to do. I like do it to be because, otherwise. Yeah, because we have other business we have to take care of. But the thing is, though, 
you know, if we do have complaints come in, we will. Police. We will send them. Please. Karen will call you immediately. Now, does, do you have Karen? Karen, do you have the other gentleman's phone name and his phone number? Uh, well, I just received Boris's, and you want to keep it. Yes, yeah. sure. you have one for Karen. So maybe we can keep everything above board and honest down there at the business. Okay. Yep. There you go. That's the easiest way. Okay. So there's no what issue. What also happened to is that people to the police. I have one yeah, the yes. police told me to come. That's my direct okay. sell, my personal email, so everybody can no, okay. have it. All right, thank you. No problem. All right. All right. Okay, so we'll go to the end. we'll end hearing at it now, and we'll start. Thank you. So do we have a business permit that we have? To yes, we're going to check into that. Because uh, that's another thing we have to check on a business certificate with the town clerk and find out whose name is on that. Because if, uh, if Mr. Cardinelli's name is on that, we'll have you'll have to come up and take out another business certificate. So what's, yeah, our, it's what's just our, our next meeting? For us? We really our next meeting, the 18th. The 18th. Um, could, yeah. Maybe we need to reconvene then we'll before we make a decision on the business license. Yeah. yeah, I know his name on it because it is not. I looked personally before I would even. No. Come on board to make sure that. Okay, so, but you should come up to the not. town clerk. He'll he's here till till eight o'clock tomorrow night. Yeah. He comes in at two. Okay. He comes in at two, and he's here until eight. So you should come in and you know take out a new certificate with him. And we'll four boards. Yeah. Or four boards. Everything's still in his. But hold on, I'm not in the But you're managing. Both of you should probably come up. You mean what kind of certificate then? It's a business, business certificate. What it does, it registers your business here in the community. Okay, even though it's registered at the state? You still yeah, do? you have to also do okay. it with the town. Okay. And we, yeah, we should reconvene this hearing probably until our next meeting to make sure all of this has been done, if you want to come back up. And okay. that's what, on the 18th? The 18th, yeah. The 18th, and we'll put you on for the first one, maybe? At, okay, up on the first on the agenda. At 630 on the agenda. Okay. Do you have the application? Did you fill it out? Yeah, you uh, but, you know, is that really the application? Because I got common victualizer license. Is that really what's there for the... No, it's, a, it's no. class two license. I, I did the class two as well because I figured, you yeah, know, it might be a wrong application or something. Well, the killer well, is... is with oh, okay. Yeah, it's like alcohol is related or something. Yeah, so. no, I need, I need okay. okay. And thank you, by the way. Thank you very much for your time. I'm actually looking forward to this. So I have, I would strongly recommend if what you're doing right yeah, now is yeah, supposedly yeah, making you know, people right for people in the situation that you start documenting the fact that you're working to do that and that if you have an, an additional from a standpoint of what you've done to set things right. I, I, I would yeah, strongly so. advise that because yeah. really yeah. I still have some heartburn with the oh gee we weren't aware any of this was going on gee, no. but gee there's no real way to contact you it, you know what I, I hate to put it this way though when it walks like a duck it quacks like a duck it's a duck okay. I understand. if you're really walking like a goose then that's great but let's actually have the visual I understand yeah. Let's keep going. Okay, well, let's get finished up. I just want to ask All right. you, oh, do you have the um, insurance certificate, the workers' comp liability? Uh, yeah, I can tax it to you if you want. Next, I don't have it right now. Have it for the next meeting. Yeah, okay. We have it for the next meeting. We'll okay. Be just the workman's comp? I believe that's it. I'll call it. Okay. Okay, okay. so thank you for coming. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Next on the agenda is to sign the 2019 Common Vic Victor License and the Class 2 License. Okay, we have one here for uh, the plan box. We're going to do them as a package. Yeah, that's what I was just going to do them as a package. We have one for the plan box, uh, White's Landing, uh, Cumberland Farm, and this one is for the Dollar General. They have spirits, Boswell Enterprises, which is uh, Central Street package. And uh, this one is for Brookfield Congregational Church. 
And then this one is for uh, Brookfield Rod and Gun Club. Uh, it's what it is. It's a common vigilance license for entertainment license and a jukebox. Another one for Tip Top Country Store. And that's it. And I'd like so a motion that we approve these and I'll second. start signing. Mm -hmm. In the next pass. Yeah. The taking care of this uh, when I contacted him once before, but I got a, another complaint from a resident about um, cleanliness in the milk cooler over at Ballard General. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, and they said it had been really good right after he went out and reached yeah. out to him, and then it went all that heck in a hand basket after that, so if you it, mention it to him I next will. time you I'll see him and see if he'd... Uh, See if he'd do his magic again to convince him to. That'd be nice. Well, he should probably send an inspector down. Yeah. Health inspector should probably go down. That's what should go down. Yeah. Yeah. But at least, at least let him know whatever the appropriate party is for him to involve in it. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to pull the one for. Yeah, so pull the one for. Yeah, you want to give me that one for the book bill file. I'll put it with this and we'll wait and see. Yeah. It ends up with the insurance and the insurance. Okay. 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 Oops. Okay. I'll move. Uh, just okay. Just get going and I'll get these things. And then I would also like um, to make a motion to um, sign all of the, um, what are these? Class two. Class two licenses. We have uh, two of them here. We have one for um, Richard Ross, which is uh, B&D Coach Works, and the other one is for David Holm of the Home Auto Group, LLC. Motion. Like a motion to sign these? Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I believe it's a year on home autogram. No, no. He's having some successes, I understand. The next on our agenda is to uh, accept the ADA policy and grievance policies, procedure, procedure policy. 
And these were done up by Kathy LaRocca, who is also our grant writer. And she's the ADA coordinator? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, she's in accordance with the American Americans with Disabilities Act. The town of Brookfield has adopted the following policy to address requests for reasonable accommodations made by people with disabilities and its employment services, activities, policies, procedures, and regulations. Uh, citizens and employees or applicants for employment of the town of Brookfield with qualified disabilities should address any requests for accommodation, accommodation to the town ADA coordinator using the reasonable accommodation request form available on the town's website or from the office of the administrative, co administrative coordinator or select board. Written requests should be sent to, it says uh, in here in parentheses, she's got uh, alternate means of filing a request such as a personal interview, phone calls, or tape request will be made available for persons with disability if unable to communicate their request in writing. And uh, you can send them here to ADA coordinator in care of the Brookfield Selectman's Office, Town Hall, 6 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass, 01506, or phone 508-867-2930, or they can be faxed to 508-867-5091. Right. A motion to approve. Mm -hmm. And accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. There's, there's nothing. We don't have no. to sign anything. Nope. Nothing. And then there's three. And Kathy, Kathy LaRocker is the ADA coordinator for that. Okay. Yeah, the grievance is a part Grievan, of it. The grievance is part of the ADA. Okay. The grievance for that. All right. All right. Next thing here is retirement and a resignation. Oh, we have to accept this one separately. Okay. Oh, they have. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so okay. Okay. I would like a, a motion to accept the uh, grievance procedures. <clears throat> You've got that motion. Second. Any. Uh, right. Just so it's clear, this yeah. is the grievance. Yeah. This is the process grievance. Process that yeah. should ADA not be. Yeah. Followed. This is under the American uh, with Disabilities Act. Also. Right. Do we have any discussion at all? Puts us in compliance. Okay. At a high level, what's the the what's there in writing is it basically that you contact the coordinator and yeah. indicate yeah she's got it right in and, okay yep. perfect yep. Yeah. Okay. basically what she read earlier okay yeah well well i understand that's the policy but just the uh, grievance I'll, procedure is just to contact the coordinator okay yeah. all in favor aye. aye okay next one is retirement and a resignation okay we have a this came from the library uh Arthur Putnam, who has been there, um, who's worked for eight years, is retiring from the, uh, the library. And so, uh, you know, we'll accept this retirement. We're sad to see him go because he's done a very good job, I understand, over at the library. And we want to wish him uh, good luck in all of his future endeavors. Motion to, Motion to accept. accept the resignation Second. of retirement. All in favor? Uh -huh. uh, and our next one here, too, is for from the, uh, Michael Blanchard, the chief, uh, to accept Reserve Officer Alex Johnson's letter of resignation because he is, has accepted a full-time position in Littleton, Mass. He served the residents of Brookfield for the past two and a half years as part-time, and I wish him well in his future endeavors. And Motion to accept it. Motion to accept. Second. And I also wish Officer Johnson uh, wish him well in his future endeavors. Okay. Those in favor? Hmm? Those in favor? in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now, we know, do we know how Chief, the Chief's doing overall in maintaining enough reserve officers? No, we'll have to check with him. He didn't mention anything. Okay, well, I'm going to ask for approval for all of these. Yes. At one time. Okay. These are some more of our um, special use permits for um, the, the lake. Yeah. Okay. For Quayba Pond. This is from the New England uh, Bass Mass West. It's called. Uh, this one is from uh, QQLA for South Pond. And the other one is QQ, QQLA Association for South Pond. 
Now, let's see. Then we have uh, the last cast anglers, that's for South Pond. And then QQLA again for Quaybaugh Pond. And, and then we have another one for Extreme Bass Fishing Club on the Quaybaugh Pond. And I'd like it to have a motion to uh, have these signed and gain these permits. Motion to approve. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think we have anything like that. Um, yes, you wanted to discuss the. Uh, this one? That's the summer. Is that what you want? Do you want to discuss that in the other? Do you want to put this on the other or do we want to do this in the other? Uh, I think that this is. Uh, this was the time discussed. Oh, under, sorry, all right, all right. under the earlier. Okay, okay. So <coughs> we don't so, have any. So, under. Uh, if I'm unsuccessful, then we'll put this on the agenda for next yeah. week. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. And under correspondence, the only thing we have was that uh, the Mass Works grants that was put in, we it wasn't we was not awarded to the town of Brookfield. So we hope maybe better luck next time. Yep. Okay. Motion to adjourn at eight oh five. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm may sorry. I, may I? Sure, Don. Just quickly, uh, I wanted to give you an update on the uh, water superintendent search. We uh, have published the announcement. We are accepting applications. Uh, we have also ensured that we have uh, a superintendent to cover us for the time that Jim is, is not here and that uh, he will continue on until we have a new superintendent, permanent superintendent, and there'll be a little bit of overlap as well. So I just want to let you know that, that that process is all in place. So there should be no interruption in any of our uh, water service. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that there is a, uh, the survey that has gone out to the south side of uh, town uh, and ask people that if they get those surveys, uh, please get them in. Very important that we get those responses so that we get a true representation of what people's thoughts are on, on the uh, extending of water lines. Um, a couple of other quick things. Um, I know that you are aware of some vandalism that has occurred along Route 9. Uh, the uh, trees that Appleseed uh, put in, we put in 13 new uh, cherry trees uh, last fall. Mm -hmm. uh, of the 13 trees, eight have been damaged. Uh, they've been broken off right uh, below the, the tree growth. Um, then there was some vandalism down at the cemetery, and then there was, I guess, some vandalism last week. So there, there is an occurrence of vandalism along the Route 9 stretch, and I would ask that, I know that the police uh, department is working on that. If anybody sees anything, uh, if there, anybody happens to have a, a security camera and they pick up anything on that, I would certainly request that they um, help the police in, in searching and. Um, you know, the, the damage to the trees, they're probably not going to survive. Okay. Uh, so we're over um, close to $2,000, you know, over 1000 close to 2000 for the damage that was done to the trees. So unfortunately, uh, you know, this is a, a, a new occurrence in town. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can stop it. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that the water level is still up in in the lakes. We're yes. still uh, three feet over my dock. <laughs> you know, there are many docks still still in the water. So I don't know if you're in contact with East Brookfield or whether they're talking to you about what their schedule is on yeah, opening. Sorry, you just reminded me of something else that I got to bring up real quick. So. so I think they were talking about delaying it. Three weeks indefinitely, time. but oh, de I heard they were talking about delaying it for three weeks. And, and okay. Yeah. Oh, de yeah. It has to be. So Ken's are, Ken Cleveland is coordinating. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Um, just one thing. I, I 
I received a, a contact from Pear Construction that's handling the East Brookfield um, bridge work that's going to have to happen on Quaybox Street. Mm -hmm. uh, they they need, and I, I just forwarded the email to Karen like today, um, but we need to put probably put it on the agenda for the 18th. Um, there's a they need some sort of certification from us that we're okay with the takings, even though all the takings are state or or town land, um, that, and it's just a temporary taking for them to be able to reroute traffic and put construction equipment. Um, it sounds like that there is an allowance under Mass General Law that would allow us to um, accede to that. What we probably need is a statement from ConCon, Con, uh, Highway Superintendent, okay. and Police Chief. Uh, but we can go over it in detail at the next oh, meeting, okay. but I just want to make certain that um, y'all are aware that they were in contact. Because I had reached out to them after Don had raised the issue back in the fall, and then they didn't want to get anything on the town meeting, and then literally like the week after the town meeting, they contacted me, um, saying now that they, they did want to go through this procedure to, to get the authorization. So um, I'll get all the, the paperwork together, and we can talk about it next week. Okay, I have one more thing. Okay, um, on behalf of myself and the Board of Selectmen, I would like to express our sympathies to uh, James Booth, who was our water superintendent, and to his family because they had a death in the family within the past week. So our sympathies go out to them. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.